Okay. Because now I can't record it. We're good. Yeah, I know. Techniques, but we're afraid to ask. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a reference, by the way. That's a reference to a Woody Allen movie. Um, anyway. So, uh, so let's see if that works. So I'm not sure if I need to click on it or use the arrows. We'll see. Yes, it works. You still see the main screen? Mm -hmm. Or are, no. you, are you? Do you see yeah. both slides, yeah. or do you see the one? It, it should no, just the one slide. This one. Okay, yeah. Good. I can see the one slide. Good, good. And so, yeah, so, so printing basically comes in the shape of, well, well multiple shapes, but it's, it's pretty simple stuff, right? So it's basically ink on paper. So uh, as you can see in the upper left, you have the, uh, the Pantone swatch books, which is a, a, what's called a color matching system, basically, that is universal. Uh, as, a, as designers, we use that all the time. We say, you know, it's Pantone, Pantone 021, which is a really bright orange. And these are custom made inks, right? And then you can make a file, use that specific Pantone, send it to Japan or France or, or the US, and everybody knows what that color means, right? Um, the, the other way of to print stuff, and we were talking about that with, uh, with Sheldon earlier, the difference between RGB and CMYK. RGB is for screen, like screen colors, and CMYK are printing colors, like cyan, magenta, yellow, and K is key color, which is black. And then the, the uh, little image on the upper right is the, uh, it's how the full image gets printed in, uh, in a half tone, basically. So they're basically um, grid patterns of little dots uh, that are very, very, very small. And visually, it gives you a full color image. So in, in, in grayscale only, it's just different size of, uh, of uh, dots in black and white. So as, it does, as a designer, knowing your print techniques, uh, old and new, is as important as knowing your types of paper. Uh, color and typography. So types of paper meaning ranges from coated paper to uncoated paper to cardstock to um, papers that have tints, texture, etc. etc. So all of those, uh, if you're unsure about that type of stuff, if you ever have a, a project to send out, the best way to deal with that you know, to figure out what you need is you talk to your print rep. You talk to the, the guy at the, at the print shop and you say, look, I'm printing this thing. The client would like to have that. What do you have? And then they suggest papers according to what you need to write. Um, so using the, the right print method for your project can give you uh, your design a notable edge, differentiate what you create as being a, of a higher quality, and at the same time help you make sure what you're designing is within budget. And that, the last two words, within budget, are the keywords. The client will go, you know what? I want to you know, print this incredible thing but I have a $500 budget. So you go, okay, well, that incredible thing, you can uh, do it on a photocopier, right, basically. So if your client has the budget, let's say if it's a, a real estate developer, then you can do full-size scale brochures with like emboss and um, uh, spot varnish and all those type of techniques. So that's extra money, of course. So remember, printing is nothing more than ink on paper or varnish on paper, or foil on paper, or no ink at all, but just embossing, or toner, or cardstock, or dye sub on fabrics, or latex on the outdoor banner material, or silk screen ink on cardboard, fabric, glass, metal, plastics, acrylic. Okay, you got it? So, you know, print design is easy, right? It's, you know, it's everything basically under the sun. So, it's not just ink on paper. So, let's get started. Drum roll, please. Offset printing. This is the workhorse of printing. Pretty much everything that you see in magazine racks uh, is the stuff that you get in your, uh, in your mailbox. Uh, it is printed, likely printed on, the, on an offset printing machine. So the most, com most common print method for mass produced print materials like brochures and books, this print method is also quite old. Uh, this uh, method uh, uses metal plates with the rubber blankets to transfer the print to paper. So as you can see in the image on the, on the right hand side in the upper right, the plate is that blue and white uh, uh, basically image on the roller and that's a flexible um, uh, plate and there's an emulsion on it and they're, they're um, what do you call it, uh, developed with whatever graphic that you made. The bottom one is the blanket uh, where the image is transferred to the blanket and the blanket will transfer the image onto the paper. So as you can see the image below it, you have a, uh, a huge Heidelberg press right there. So it gives you an, an idea of the size of those machines. And you have all the ink rollers on the scene. You see those pink colors there, blue and et cetera. So these are ink rollers 
Um, so you have a fountain on the top, you have all those, you know, basically ink that is flowing in there, and then all those rollers make sure that the, 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 the ink is evenly spread across the roller, which transfers to the, to the, uh, the plate, which transfers to the blanket. And that, yeah, you can control all that stuff. So usually the press man, the guy on the bottom right there, knows how to use that stuff, how to set it up. And, and so this, is, this machine is, uh, is a six color print right there. So meaning it's a CMYK plus probably a Pantone, such as that pink that you see on the left hand side. So a, a custom mixed ink and maybe a varnish or something. And, um, and those machines are, they're very, very heavy. They're very expensive. Uh, and they will print very large sheets of paper, like you know, up to forty some inches wide um, uh, paper. Uh, so, and then they, it, the paper runs flat; it does not roll around, doesn't not, does not run around a roller, just like on a on a on a laser printer. It runs straight flat right across, and they can print between six and twelve thousand copies in a, uh, an hour. So it's pretty loud, it's pretty fast, uh, and uh, and pretty dangerous for the, the press stand. So. Uh, there's terrible stories of uh, pressmen missing digits. Um, so the offset, basically offset lithography, that's, the, that's what it's known, offset printing, is very consistent and can be used for short, medium, and long print runs. So if you have, the, if you have a client that wants 10,000 copies of a specific document, you will likely use a, an offset printing uh, technique because it's cheaper, it's more, more uh, um, economical. Uh, web offset printing is the fastest of this type of printing and is generally used for high volume publishing like newspapers and magazines. And um, these are the images for the, for the, to, to show you what a web press is. So the top images is they're called sheet fed, right? So you see the image on the left hand side, it's an eight color uh, print shop, like a, a Heidelberg print shop. But on the right hand side of that, of that photograph, you see a stack of paper on the right hand side. And these are the sheets that come out on the, so the right image on the right side. It's, is how the sheets come out at the other end. And this machine particular, this particular uh, uh, press is four and four. Uh, so it's a four color process plus four color process. And you can do literally, you can print both sides of the paper at once. So it has what is called a perfector in between. So where it flips the paper around and then prints it prints on the other side right away. The bottom left image is, uh, is how the, the plates are set up on the rollers. Um, and then the image in the middle is kind of hokey, but it shows you uh, from, from the right to the left, it shows you the cyan being printed, magenta, the yellow and the black, and you see that the image just prints, you know, first the cyan, then the magenta, and it looks a little purplish, then the yellow, then it becomes red, and then the black is printed, and then it's a full color image. And then that bottom image on the right hand side is a, is a web press. So web press is not a sheet fed, it's on, it's on a roller. So this one is a small roller, it's not very, very wide. But for example, um, uh, newspapers, they have uh, rollers that are about five feet wide, I think, uh, and they weigh multiple tons, right? So you have to have a fork tape to bring the, the roll of paper to the, to the machine. And again, that's also a straight feed and continuous feed, right? So you print flyers out of that stuff, you print magazines, you print um, newspapers. You, like, this is for like very, very high, very large print runs. Digital printing is uh, for more like a, Print on demand and large format. Uh, so digital printing can be done in various ways. Two technologies dominate the industry. So number one is inkjet, what you probably have at home. is like that tiny little machine, desktop machine, right? So it's basically an image that needs to be printed, are created by small droplets of ink and um, that are propelled from the nozzles uh, of one or more print heads. And you probably have experienced that your, your printer getting clogged up and ink spilled all over and not printing right. So yeah, so there's your digital printing problems right there. So inkjet devices can print on a wide range of substrates, such as uh, paper, plastic, canvas, or even doors and floor tiles, right? So depending on the, on the, the type of ink that you use, sometimes they don't use ink, sometimes they use a, um, a latex, uh, outdoor latex, right? So it's not, uh, it doesn't fade away in, uh, when it's in, in the outdoor. Uh, inkjet printing is used uh, a lot for posters and signage. Uh, it is also economical but for, for short run publications such as photo books or small runs of, of books. So on the right hand side, the images that you have here is a huge plotter basically that is what probably a six foot wide. And you have those uh, boxes below that are just basically the roller of the, your material. And those can be paper, you know, different type of vinyl material for outdoor banners and whatnot. And then below is an example of um, those pop-up banners, right? <clears throat> that you, you print on those machines. And then they all roll up in the base, that metallic base at the bottom. So that's what digital printing is for. 
So there's inkjet, number, that's number one. And then number two is xerography. Right? So you, you've all known about what a Xerox is. It's a photocopier. But what it is, it's, a, it's, a, it's used by laser printers, right? So the image that needs to be printed is formed, is formed by selectively applying a charge to a metal cylinder called a drum. The electrical uh, charge is used to attract toner particles. And toner is just a very, very fine powder. These particles are transferred to the media that is being printed on. To make sure the toner is fixed properly, the substrate passes through a fuser that melts the toner into the medium. And you've, you may have experienced that you know, if you had a chance to work with a, a large printer at, at, at work or at school or, or in an office. Um, once in a while, you get streaks all over, and that's where your fuser is not, um, is not working anymore, and then you need to change parts, and then you need to reload toner, and et cetera, et cetera. So, so the, classic, the classic problems of, uh, of digital printing. So laser printers are not only used in offices, but also for some uh, small run printing of books, brochures, and other types of documents such as the, the examples on the bottom right. <clears throat> These printers are also used for transactional printing, such as bills, bank documents, et cetera, and direct mail. So a direct mail, for example, would be a letter that you send out, and it's pre-printed, and it runs through a, a digital printer, and you just have what is called variable text, such as, you know, uh, dear, dear Heather, you know, and then at the end, it's like, thank you, Heather. So, and then your, your address will be printed directly on it. So again, so they're pre-printed, and then they run them again through, uh, through a digital printer. A letterpress. Letterpress is what I was showing you earlier in the actual print book there. That is the granddaddy of printing. So letterpress have become very popular again uh, with an uh, upsurge of interest in vintage design styles, right? So the most famous of print styles in, invented by Gutenberg in, in himself, letterpress applies ink to the raised areas of an image. Uh, Gutenberg is well, kind of uh, the the credit is credit is, is given to him as the inventor of the press, but he's not the inventor of of the press of printing per se. He's the inventor of movable type. So type uh, uh, before books were made, they were actually handwritten, and most of the time they were Bibles. They were handwritten by monks. If you if you've seen the, the movie The Name of the Rose, that's what it was. And then the press came on on board. Uh, letters were pre-carved in wood and then inked and then printed uh, one sheet at a time back in the day. And now this is a machine that's kind of semi-automated. Oh yeah, do you have something to say? No, I was just apologizing for that phone call. Oh, oh we didn't yeah. even hear. We didn't hear. Oh, okay, it was swatty. From, it was <laughs> swatty from the school, that's all. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so so letterpress, letterpress is, is it's a bit more obscure today with similar techniques that can mimic its retro appeal. And you can, as I said, a letterpress look and feel. You can do that digitally. You can do that in offset. Uh, however, it is still the original printing technique and lands a project a highly custom crafted look at a reasonable cost. Um, there is a, um, a guy that I follow, and I've met him several times. Uh, he lives in Fernie, and uh, his print shop is called Clawhammer Press. And he does beautiful work. So clawhammerpress.com, I believe. Uh, that could be his website. But look at him. Look, look him up. Clawhammer Press in Fernie, and he does beautiful work. So this is what it. That's how you set up basically a letterpress. So you have either wood blocks, which is you know in the upper left and the central image. So letters are literally carved in wood, or or, or lead blocks, right? So you have also letters that are uh, basically poured in lead. So it's, it was not exactly a, a very healthy uh, job to have because you had um, uh, oil-based inks and lead blocks and anyways, breathing a lot of uh, paper dust as well. So printers back in the day did not live very long. Uh, in the upper right uh, is more of, a, of the, the, the modern era of, um, of letterpress. It's basically a plate that, is, um, uh, that has an emulsion and that you etch. And then so you get your digital file basically transferred directly into a plate. And then after that, it goes into the, the regular old fashioned press where you need to ink things and, and, and put a piece of paper one at a time. But you get this beautiful textured letters because it's never, never exactly perfect. As you can see the image on the right hand side, the letters have that texture. You can't mimic that. There's, there's, there's a certain quality to letterpress printing that is just absolutely gorgeous. And, and I'm, a, I'm a big fan. Engraving is another crazy technique. The fancy, oh sorry, no, the expensive side of printing. Engraving is a very old print technique, same thing, right, as the letterpress. First seen in use 
on a chiseled shell in Indonesia dating back 540 million years ago, or give or take. It's, it's pretty old. I don't have a, a next, an, an actual date. So modern retail engraving, however, is the go-to print techniques for high-end print projects and used by companies and individuals who want to impress. Uh, engraving involves incising a design onto a hard, usually flat surface. By cutting into it, the process is time intensive, intensive but creates a very distinguished final product. And if you know the, um, the movie American Psycho, uh, the scene where they all compare their business cards, and those are images on the right-hand side is from the movie, uh, that's exactly it, right? They get all, those, those lawyers get all excited about their latest, um, you know, type of paper and the font and anyway. So the movie is a little, goes a little off rails from that point on, but it gives that, see like, as you can see the image on the right hand side, engraving pushes the, le the, the, the printing into the paper. So it has that, that extra tactile feel to it, right? And some examples here, um, on the right hand side, you can see the, the, the bottom, bottom right there, you have that an old um, copper uh, plate that is engraved, and this is what it prints like on, uh, above it, right? So it, it has that raised ink and texture, and as I said, very expensive, um, but absolutely gorgeous look, right? So this is, this is for clients with very deep pockets. I have never had a chance to work with a client that had pockets this deep, unfortunately. Uh, thermographic. So thermographic is, um, as it, thermal means heat. So that's an, that's an affordable alternative to uh, that type of engraving and all that type of stuff. So thermographic printing is an innovative printing, well, not that innovative, it's pretty old, uh, technique that uses traditional print methods coupled with thermography machine. The key aspect of this type of printing is that it uses heat to create the letters or images on paper. The type of printing is commonly used on wedding invitations, letterhead, business cards, gift wrap, packaging, and even and can even be used to print braille text, as you can see in the bottom right image. It is considered a quick, low-cost alternative to engraving, uh, to engraved embossing. So how that that works is actually what you do is you print your invite or your whatever you want, and you you don't dry it. So because there's different techniques right off the press to dry your ink very quickly. But this actually is usually attached at the end of your, of your press, and it's an extra little machine. So you don't dry the ink, and it runs through that machine. And what it does is it, is it, it basically sprinkles a, 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 a thermographic powder on top, which sticks to the ink, and it goes into a, basically a little heater, right? And whatever sticks to the ink gets heated, and then gets puffy. And that's exactly how it functions. So it looks like an engraving, or it looks like a raised uh, um, you know, letterpress type, and it's not at all. So it's not perfect, as you can see the letters in the bottom left image there, it's kind of crummy and kind of, it has, it has a certain charm because it looks like it's handmade, and it's not. So it's just, as I said, a, a powder that expands, basically it's almost like a resin, basically, that you heat up and it expands. It's pretty cool. And you can see some, some really cool um, effects that you can do to it, right? So the, 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 uh, the marriage um, invite on the upper right there is you can use metallic inks, right? And do that little thermographic ink on top. Um, you, can do, you can do black on black, you know, you can do you know, black ink on black paper. You can do that, you know, raise. Again, you can see the let's do coffee at the bottom. Uh, you can raise those letters, but it's not perfect, right? So it's, it has a little texture, which is cool, right? So again, it's limited in, 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 um, in very fine, very small print. Um, it will it'll tend to clog up or not work at all. And then that, that fish engraving on the left-hand side is fairly large, but you can see the tiny, tiny little details that you just, it doesn't pick up, right? Because the powder can't, can't stick to very, very few little amount of ink. Silk screening is, was uh, is still my favorite in uh, was in, in art school and we and I still do a lot of that stuff. So this is for do uh, do it yourselfers, right? DIYs. Uh, silk screening or silks or screen printing is considered a, to be a short run print techniques because it's very manual labor intensive. Currently, uh, it is frequently employed by many artists for designing posters, T-shirts, art prints. And uh, record covers, rarely, but it's, it still uh, gets, done, gets done like this. Um, as for the cost of creating <clears throat> this printing technique, a screen printing kit and ink is comparatively cheap. cheap. Furthermore, 
It is not challenging to grasp it and then use it in alternative ways. The screen printing is an incredibly flexible technique. And as you can see in the images on the right hand side there, the, the upper left there has, it's a basically, it's a, it's, a, it's a frame that has a fabric that is stretched over it, the yellow, uh, the yellow fabric that is stretched. And there's an emulsion put on it and you expose the screen. So as I said, it's very labor intensive. And then once your screen is ready and you can see at the bottom, the bottom image is you have your basically almost like as a, as a stencil, right? So you put, you put that, as I said, your negative, sorry, your positive, you expose it, you wash it off, you let it dry, and then you start to print stuff. And you have to have a squeegee, you custom mix your inks, mm -hmm. and, then, and then you let it dry. So on the upper right there, you have a dry rack, the classic silk screen dry rack. You put your this is how down. you would do like t-shirts lots of times. Yeah. Like, so you'll tell like when your t-shirt is like a, if it's like an iron on, so it's like, it's like a piece of paper with a printing on it and just stretches. That's where like they, they crack or yeah. like break a lot. <laughs> Like they don't last very long. If you get it silk screened, it stretches with the fabric. So it's like. Yeah, depending on the ink. Yeah, depending on use. the, yes. But it's like, yeah. you can't tell it's like, you don't see those lines or cracking as bad as if it's. Yeah, oh yeah, it's it's part of the fabric, right? Yeah, you can see like it's, it soaks right into the fabric. Yeah, the, the bottom image is actually a, a t-shirt printing or a fabric printing uh, shop, right? So mm -hmm. this, the, the, the machine that he's working on is only a four color print. So basically you put your fabric down where that's what he's doing with that red piece of fabric, which is a towel, I think. But you can, you can put a t-shirt over that, the, the board that he has. And then what you have right now, he's only printing a single color, but you have different clamps and you can do up to four colors at a time, right? So for this particular machine. You have, you have machines like professional shops and they have uh, um, uh, silk screen uh, t-shirt uh, printing machines that are up to 12 colors and the footprint of those things is like, it's massive. Right? They are Most people massive. I know do it by hand. Yeah, so those machines are like nomadic and they're, they're $600,000 machines. Yeah. yeah, so as examples, this is what you can do in silk screen. You can do some incredible stuff, right? Yeah. So you can overlap colors, you can make them semi-translucent, your, your inks can, can be semi-translucent. You can print on paper, you can print on, on mugs, on glass, on metal, on wood, on fabrics, on, I mean, you name it, you, you can do it, right? So uh, the, the, the thing is, you can also do four color process in silk screen, which is really, really difficult to get a, a good result because of what's called registration, basically making sure that the colors are perfectly uh, aligned. Those examples that I have, the Honor Thy Music poster, you see the colors overlapping, same with the Only Do uh, What Your Heart Tells You. The inks are semi-translucent and overlap. So as, um, as you can see, the, the, the guitar shape there overlaps with the, uh, with the shape of the, 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 the cityscape. The color gets deeper, right? And then the images on the, on the left are painted black. The colors are perfectly separated and don't overlap, right? So there, you can have all those effects as well. You can, you can emulate those effects right in Photoshop, right? In, in different transparency and, and transparency mode. So right, these are, this is like, the, as I said, the very, you know, tactile, manual labor intensive, fun stuff you can do with, uh, with printing. Embossing and debossing like a boss. So in general, embossing and debossing experience a lot um, in common and are remarkably similar to printing techniques. The sole difference between them lies in the finish. Embossing creates a raised impression while debossing a depressed one, as you can see in the examples on the right hand side. This impression is conveyed on paper by ex exerting pressure between a metal plate mounted in a press and a counter. The counter is basically something that is flexible, like basically a little rubber blanket that allows the, the, uh, the, the, the plate to push the paper down. While developing the design for these printing techniques, do not forget such a mechanical process. It will change the paper and at the same time, the design itself. Uh, be sure that there is enough space between the letters because these techniques can coalesce them. So meaning the finer the letters, the less it's going to be possible. And the, the, the finer and the tighter things, paper has um, only so much flexibility. You know, the fiber will eventually crack uh, or will just won't be able to do to do that that type of technique and embossing and debossing is, is it gets pretty cool you can do some very very basic stuff and you can do some really intensive design cool aspects such as so on the left hand side is a emboss or a deboss 
It's a devolved. Example on the left uh, hand, which one? Upper like left. The, the, the leather? Yep. Deboss. That's a deboss. That's a deboss. And then the Laura Zastrow photography, that's an emboss, right? Because it's raised. Same with the little crown. Which one are you looking at? Right. Oh, photography. Yeah. I see it. Yeah, yeah. But then the upper right there, that business card on the upper right, that looks like a, it's like a furniture cool. from oh, it looks amazing. century. Yeah. This one pulls all the stops, right? It has an embossed deboss, it has engraving, foil. it has a custom gold the, ink, I think, and I think it's not a even gold a gold ink, ink. Okay, it's yeah. foil. I mean, yeah. this is like yeah. expensive, but look at the, how beautiful that is, it right? Looks it's like amazing. You know, absolutely yeah. incredible. And at the bottom left, the Omega, uh, that's how the plate looks like, right? So some, most of the plates nowadays are, it's an emulsion based and an an etching kind of thing technique. Uh, but back in the day, it used to be metal, right? So they need to be etched on metal or, or, or done with an engraver. And that's how it's done, right? You place that plate on, on your material, on leather, on paper, on whatever, and you just put it, you apply a lot of pressure. Yeah. Varnishing. Ooh, shiny. So, there are many reasons why choosing varnish is better compared to other printing techniques. Foremost, it generates impressive visual effects. There is an excellent variety of varnishes with different finishes, the most common being gloss varnish, satin or silk varnish, matte varnish, ultraviolet or UV varnishing, spot UV, and all over UV. So the UV in general is, I think it's the upper right there, that's a spot UV on their upper right image there and then the bottom right. It's basically a part of your design is just printed in varnish and it's super high gloss, right? So this is where you start to, to play with textures, you know, a matte paper on a, with a glossy, um, uh, super gloss like this, super gloss uh, varnish. Uh, you can do multiple varnishes. You can do a, a satin and a, or matte and, and gloss, and that's all you print. You print just varnishes on the, on the colored paper, for example. I've done that before. Uh, this, the, varnishing, the varnish itself does not have to be translucent. It can be colorized, right? It can be, it can have a tint to it. Um, so secondly, the, var the cool thing about varnishing is it's time saving because it's fairly quick. All that stuff needs to be done, of course, on an offset press. And finally, varnishing is generally economical. So it's, it's fairly cheap, right? Um, there's uh, digital machines now, uh, like a, um, uh, there's a Kodak machine, I can't remember the name of it, that does actually spot varnishing now in, in digital printing, which is, dead on cool because you can actually add texture they have a texturizer that uses a varnish so it's um it's endless nowadays you can do some really well cool i have stuff. an example here this is from coast oh, paper do they have one in calgary coast paper they used to have an office yeah okay so this one's from edmonton but like this you, is a really you, cool book because it shows uh, it shows matte dull and gloss then it Calgary. also shows no varnish here uh gloss varnish here like so there's different sections of the page yeah. that show each and then you can like flip through these yeah that's a classic that's a classic paper sample yeah showing it's so you the... yeah so yeah. if you ever work with like a this is a bigger printer but they'll even just give it to you you don't have to do work for them the if you just talk to a paper rep they will often have samples for you uh so they also have like a metallics here but they'll give you like a book that has samples of everything in it yeah. and like their paper textures and whatever. So, um, yeah, and, and coast papers or yeah, coast paper or, or uni source are, are paper distributors. Yeah. And they will have those type of samples on the hand for you guys to, to look at. And, and then they'll compare. tell you and the size of text. So text yeah, yeah. cover and, and, and the weight. Yeah. And basically those samples are, are not to sell you design is to sell you paper yeah. and so it just shows you the potential of their paper with different varnishes different techniques yeah. different inks different, et cetera, different techniques right so those are usually they're 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 pretty mass produced so that's why they can give them away yeah but they're, they're fun to have right they're they're good references they're, yeah they're just a good <laughs> reference to have in your toolbox yeah so so as an example of varnish like you can see those images there's a there's a on the upper left, it's a spot gloss on a satin or textured varnish. And then you have on the upper right there, you have, a, a, I think it's a varnish on black or it's on black paper, I think. I mean, it's really hard to tell on those images. But I've sometimes done this it's one. literally I've done something like this before. Yeah, 
it's literally just a varnish on paper and then you get that extra shine thing that it's just and it's just gorgeous right so mm -hmm. when you when you design your file you have to set that up right to set that up as a as a custom ink in your document but you you name it and you uh, you label it as a um, as a as a as a varnish so, as a varnish la layer usually right like i do it as a layer a separate layer usually and just tell them yeah usually so you can yeah. turn the eyeball on and off on that layer to show it or not show it yeah and so that's that's usually an extra step <clears throat> and that you plan that with either with your client if they want it or if you're in an agency in a group of people then your um your um, production manager will tell you okay so we're gonna just put a spot varnish on the photographs only etc cetera, etc cetera. so there's that's an extra step really uh, but you have to think about it you know when you start designing basically thanks for coming to my ted talk that was it okay i got uh, one little you. thing there i remember doing acetates you don't have to do those anymore those no this was a long time ago it was kind of like doing Acetate uh, sheets. You know, it's funny. I just went through my graphic design like portfolio from school yeah. and I found a whole bunch of them and I was like, yeah. I should show the students these. <laughs> um, um, I have, I have, I have a little bit of bad news. <laughs> um, I, my ride is here um, to take me to go to the vet to get that stuff. Okay. In there. Oh, that's fine. You made okay. it. You're only leaving 20 minutes early. So. Okay. Uh, thank you. Try to read I through your book when so, you get chances throughout the day. So, so what am I, yeah, what am I supposed to have done? Like, what's my deadline here? So lesson, so basically you'll have three weeks to finish all of it. So I would finish your 10 lesson or your 10 assignments by next yeah. Friday. So read through your book and be done reading your book by next Friday. Aim for that. If you okay. don't hit Friday, then, you know, at least you're close. Okay. And then you'll, you'll be able to finish Monday, Tuesday or something like that. Okay. That's what I would aim for. Aim for next Friday. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Good okay, luck. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. You want to stop recording? Oh, yep.